Hey there, it's Brie, and this is my August TBR. So I'm doing something a little bit different for my TBR this month, and it may have been a mistake because I'm already feeling a little bit overwhelmed. But as always, I'm going to throw my disclaimer out there. My TBRs are absolutely a guideline. They are not hard and fast rules because I am a mood reader, but I still like to make TBRs only because I have so, so many books that I already own that I want to read that I like having a much smaller list to refer to when I'm looking for a book to read. At the end of the day, I'm going to read what I want to read. But I like to have a nice TBR to act as a guideline and I usually do pretty good reading almost all of the books on my TBR. I think for July I ended up reading all but maybe two or three books that were on my TBR so that was pretty good. This time my TBR is a little more intimidating because I had other people pick books for my TBR. Again this month I had you guys pick one book for my Kindle Unlimited TBR and one book for my Audible Escape TBR. By leaps and bounds everyone wanted me to read the Kennedy Ryan book. I had a Kennedy Ryan book for my Kindle and Kennedy Ryan for my Audible Escape. On Audible Escape, I'm going to be listening to Flow, which is the prequel to Grip, and I have already read Grip. It is an interracial romance between a rapper and this white woman. I forget what she does. I want to say maybe she works in like PR or journalism. It's a, It's been a long time since I read it, but I really liked that one. It hinted at how they met, so I'm pretty sure Flow talks about their relationship beforehand, and I think it's actually a pretty short book, so I'm very excited to read the this one. Just the hints that were given in Grip made me intrigued about this book. And I don't know why it took me so long to finally pick it up, but now I'm going to because you guys wanted me to. And then the Kindle Limited book that I'm going to read is The Kingmaker, and that is a duet by Kennedy Ryan, so I'm probably going to end up reading both the first and second book in that duet. This one, I believe, is a romance between a woman who is protesting maybe a pipeline or something going through this town, and then the man that works for or is somehow associated to the company that is putting down the pipeline. So very excited to read those two. Thank you so much for voting. And then I ended up having my two daughters and my husband each pick out a book for me to read from my bookshelf. So Rory ended up picking Lisa Kleifus's Mind Till Midnight. She actually picked the second book in this series, but when I realized that it was the second book and I owned the first book, I was like, is it okay if I read this one? She's like, yes. So she chose this because she loved the cover. She loved the pretty dress on the cover. This one also has a step back which is a little risque, but I don't think she saw that. But she loved the covers, she loves the dresses. She's like me, where I love historical romances that have gorgeous dresses on it. I know a lot of people like like the covers and everything. Those are a little bit cheesy to me. I haven't yet grown to appreciate the cheesy covers of historical romances. I much prefer the very beautiful dresses on them. This one I think is gorgeous. I don't know much about this book or this series. I do know that Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers loves Lisa Kleypas and Lisa Kleypas is a very popular historical romance writer, so I'm excited to read this. It says, a woman of modest means meets a society man skilled in the art of seduction in this captivating new novel. That sounds really, really good. And then my six-year-old Violet, unsurprisingly, <laughs> ended up picking Wonder Woman, Warbringer by Leigh Bardugo. This is one of the DC publications. The reason why she ended up picking this book was because it's Wonder Woman. She has been obsessed with Wonder Woman ever since I called her Wonder Woman because we had gone on a walk and she was writing her bike and she had just gotten a new bike. We had gone pretty far on the walk and there is this one road that has a pretty steep hill and then it's a dead end so you have to kind of slow down and then turn and she had training wheels so I wasn't really too worried about it but she was still kind of getting used to the brakes so she ends up going down this hill and taking the turn too fast and falling. She got a scrape, her knee was bleeding, she hurt her hand and everything and we had to go all the way back home and I couldn't carry her all the way home. She's heavy now. Now. So I had to sit down with her. I was like, you can do it. And we just like had a little talk. She had a little cry. And then even though she was scared, like she was very scared. She was shaking and everything. She got back on her bike and she rode all the way home on her bike. So when she got home, I was like, you are Wonder Woman. That is amazing that you did that. You dusted yourself off and you got back up on that bike, even though you were scared. I was like, that is the definition of bravery. You are Wonder Woman. And so she's been obsessed with Wonder Woman ever since. So she's been eyeing this book on my bookshelf. She's asked me a few times, like, have you read this, Mama? Have you read this? It's about Wonder Woman. So she's very excited for me to read this book. I don't know much about what this is about, aside from the fact that it's about Wonder Woman. I think maybe it's a coming-of-age type of Wonder Woman story. I have no idea, but 
gonna read it, gonna give it a try. All right, and then my husband ended up picking out Ninth House by Lee Bartugo for me. And as soon as he picked it out, I was like, ugh. And he's like, why, what? And I'm like, I have been, I'm so intimidated. I'm so intimidated by this book because a lot of people have said that it was slow. A lot of people really like it, but then a lot of other people were saying that it's slow. And I'm like, can I slog through this? I don't know. But he wanted me to read this one because he saw it on my bookshelf, it faces out on my bookshelf because I love this cover. I think it's gorgeous. I love the matte black with the glossy snake on it. He saw this on my bookshelf and he picked it because it's by Lee Bardugo, which it's funny because Wonder Woman is by Lee Bardugo too. He picked this because he just finished the Shadow and Bone trilogy and he also read the Six of Crows duet and then now he wants to read King of Scars and he's mostly reading it because they're coming out with the Netflix series, but he really enjoyed it and he was asking me about this one. So he wants me to read this to see if it's any good. And I told him it's pretty different from her other stuff that this was an adult novel and it's pretty dark. So I don't know. I'm both excited and nervous to read this one. I All I know about this is that it has a lot of trigger warnings. It's dark and it somehow revolves around a frat house or a college or Ivy League, something like that. I'm excited to read it, but also nervous. So I also wanted to pick a book from my TBR jar and shout out to Deja because I saw that she has a TBR jar like this that has little stars in it and I was obsessed with it. So I asked her about it and she sent me a link to a tutorial on how to make these and it took me for freaking ever <laughs> to figure out how to make these. Even now, like there are some that are unraveling. I didn't do a great job, but from far away it looks nice. So I'm going to pick something from my TBR jar. The books here are color coded and I forgot what the color codes are. Hold on, let me tell you. What I ended up doing is these aren't all of the books on my TBR. Obviously it would not fit in one small jar. These are all the books that are top priority for me on my TBR in different sections. Sections. So I have them categorized by purple are books that are on my bookshelf that I want to read as soon as possible. Green are books that I own on Kindle. Oh, and purple is also Audible Escape. I was like limited in the colors that I have. Yellow are books that I own on Libro FM and have bought on Audible. Pink are books that are on Hoopla or Scribd. Oh, and blue is Kindle Unlimited. So let's pick one, shall we? I actually don't even really know how to unwrap these. Which one do I want? I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I wanna do an audiobook because I feel like I have a very hefty TBR this month. So I think I wanna do an audiobook. You know what, no, no. I'm not gonna cheat. I'm gonna close my eyes. Digging down a little bit. All right, purple. So this is either a book from my bookshelf or an Audible Escape. Let's hope it's Audible Escape. All right. Be patient with me because this, oh my God, I'm gonna tear it. It took me so long to make these, it like breaks my heart to undo them. How do I even, okay, let's push it out. How, wait, it's impossible. Oh, I got it, I got it, we're fine. Okay, so, what the heck now? What are you caught on? Just open. This shouldn't be this hard. Hello? Two hours later. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is a book from my bookshelf. It is called My Dear Hamilton. I did not write the author of this, but I will show the book right here. It's over on my bookshelf. I probably could go get it, but I'm not going to. This one was at the top of my TBR because Hamilton, <laughs> like I actually bought this book years ago at Shameless or Polycon. I can't really remember. I bought it at one of those because I think Barnes and Noble or Books a Million or something was set up there. It may have been Shameless. And I saw it and I was like, you know, there's a lot of hype around that Hamilton musical. I think I'm going to get this. And then I never read it. And then Hamilton just came out. So I bumped it up on my TBR list and it looks like I'm going to read it this month. So I think it's maybe Hamilton and Eliza's story or maybe it's him and Angelica. I don't know. I don't know what it's about, but it's about Hamilton and I'm here for it. So I also picked one book from my bookshelf and the book that I ended up choosing was We Are Not Yet Equal by Carol Anderson with Tanya Bolden. There's a foreword by Nick Stone in this. This book is interesting. I didn't realize this until I bought it, but it is a 
YA version of Carol Anderson's White Rage. So it's just something, I guess, a little bit easier to digest for a YA audience. And I thought that was a good place to start. So excited to read this one and get my nonfiction in this month. And then I wanted to pick a book from Audible Escape. And I decided to go with 100,000 Words by Nairai Dawn. This is a male male brother's best friend romance. I think the hero grows up in a small town where he's like the only gay guy there. And he has the big crush on his best friend's older brother and I guess that guy's kind of a jerk and then he moves away, goes to San Francisco, has whole new horizons, he's no longer the only gay guy in town, and then he comes back and maybe in college or something he reconnects with his best friend's older brother and then a romance starts and it sounds adorable and I can't wait to read it. And then I wanted to prioritize one book from Kindle Unlimited. I ended up choosing Confidently Lost by Asia Monique. This one has a wonderfully vague synopsis and I so appreciate that in books. I don't like to know too too much about a book when I'm going into it. All it really says is the main character's name is Nova and she is cautious when it comes to love until she meets Elijah. And I love the cover of it. And then I picked a book from Hoopla and I went with Block Shot by Kennedy Ryan. This is gonna be like the month of Kennedy Ryan and I am okay with it. This is another book in one of Kennedy Ryan's series that I have not yet read and I haven't finished that series yet. I read the first book in the series but I never ended up picking up this book. I read the first book in the series like a long time ago and I completely forgot that the series continued so I'm going to pick up this book. All I know about this one is it's an enemies to lovers second chance sports romance and I believe it revolves around basketball because this series is called Hoop Series. So. <laughs> and then I picked a book from Scribd and I chose Kindred by Octavia Butler. I heard about this book on a live show. I don't remember which live show it was, but I heard about it on a live show and it sounded really, really interesting. And I also saw when I um, looked it up on Scribd that it's the first science fiction book written by a black woman, which I thought was awesome. Apparently the heroine is taken back in time to Antebellum, Maryland. I'm not sure what that means, but she's a black woman who's thrust back in time to when there was slavery and she has to try and save a slave owner until he can father her grandmother. And I think she keeps getting thrust back and forth like throughout time and I know that there's also a romance in this as well. And then I wanted to pick a book from my Audible library. These are books that I bought on Audible and I decided I wanted to read I Can't Make This Up Life Lessons by Kevin Hart. I just recently bought this book because Audible had a sale and it was only like six dollars so I ended up getting it. I love Kevin Hart and ever since I found out that he came out with a book and that he narrated his audiobook I was like I need that. I love his stand-up specials. He's one of my favorite comedians. I also wanted to actually read one of the free ebooks that I downloaded, one of the like million <laughs> free ebooks that I downloaded. So I picked Beauty Touched the Beast, A Sexy Modern Fairy Tale by Sky Warren. This is pretty self explanatory. It's a Beauty and the Beast reimagining, but it's supposed to be super, super steamy. And Sky Warren is an author that I definitely want to read more of. And then lastly, I wanted to pick a book from my Libro FM library, and I decided to go with The Voting Booth by Brandy Colbert. So this book is extremely relevant for right now because it revolves around an election obviously it's called the voting booth and the heroine is someone who like goes door to door has been campaigning for a really long time and is so excited to finally be able to be old enough to vote meanwhile the hero is just completely over the whole political thing and he just wants to get it over with and vote and they end up meeting at the voting booth because he for some reason is not allowed to vote for whatever reason I don't really know why and so she steps in to try and help him be able to vote. I don't really know the why of it. it, doesn't say on the synopsis, but I heard that this is very relevant for today and I am excited to read it. Alright guys, that's it. Those are all the books I am hoping to read in August. No promises like I said. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy reading.